Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time we're going to do something a little bit different. I thought I'd put together a short video with some of my favorite images from 2022, but as I'm showing you the photos, I also want to address a question I get from time to time about why I specialize in wildlife photography and not some other genre. So let's jump in, chat, and I'll toss up some photos. So why do I photograph wildlife? I think no matter what you photograph, you have to enjoy or find interest in the subject matter. The best portrait photographers enjoy working with people and rising to the challenge of making them look great. The best landscape photographers are in love with the natural landscape and challenge themselves to show it during interesting or dramatic moments. For wildlife shooters like me, it's a love of animals that drives us and we want to share both the beauty and behaviors of what we see with the rest of the world. Although I enjoy the process of photography, the real reason I shoot is because of the wildlife. I'm an animal lover at heart, from birds to mammals to reptiles and amphibians, I love them all. I also enjoy sharing the wildlife I discover with others. For me, photography is the vehicle that allows me to give the world a glimpse of what I see during my wildlife encounters. My overriding goal is to produce images that convey the same feelings and emotion I experience when I'm standing lens to nose with my subjects in the wild. I want those who can't be there with me at that moment to feel the same sense of awe or excitement or surprise or beauty or even laughter that I did when I pressed the shutter. In fact, I think one of the things that makes wildlife photography so compelling is that you get to engage with the animal at some level. Even just the field craft used for finding a good target is often exhilarating. Spotting wildlife is an art form in and of itself, and becoming better at discovering your own subjects in the wild is incredibly rewarding. There's just something special about finding an animal that everyone else missed and turning it into a captivating photograph. However, it goes well beyond just finding a subject. One of the things that keeps me coming back is watching and observing wildlife in the field and applying what I learned from the animals to capture increasingly better images. I think in order to really tell a story about an animal or capture a compelling image, you need to know more about the species than just its name. You need to understand what drives it, how it thinks, what motivates it to do whatever it does. I think my best images always come after I really get to know a particular species. That familiarity allows me to anticipate interesting behaviors and consequently, I'm more likely to capture unique or special moments when they happen. I think the more you know and understand an animal, the better you become at telling that animal's story. And the moments where you capture an inspiring image showcasing an interesting behavior that you knew was coming, those, those are particularly addictive. I also love showing animals in action, and a good part of a successful action shot is knowing that the animal is about to spring into action. When you understand the behavior of a species, not only can you predict when action is likely, but it also gives you the opportunity to prep yourself accordingly so you're in the best location for that action when it happens. The enemy of a great action shot is surprise. If you don't know an interesting behavior is about to happen, it's incredibly tough to catch up from behind the viewfinder. Of course, images that lean towards the anthropomorphic side are also a lot of fun. One sure way to engage a viewer is when an animal displays a human-like characteristic. Sometimes it's an expression, sometimes it's an emotion, or sometimes the animal is just doing something very relatable, like the little wave the sea turtle is giving as he makes his way towards the ocean. Those moments are often few and far between, but capturing them is one of the reasons I love to take my camera to the field. Then there are the unexpected moments that really surprise you. So often as wildlife photographers, we tend to idealize what the perfect photo of this subject or that subject would look like, only to have mother nature give us something even better. Those are the moments that make all the long hours of searching for something special worthwhile. I know I can spend days trapped in the photographic doldrums only to have all that drudgery and grinding washed away in a single spectacular moment that makes an entire trip worthwhile. In fact, I think it's those scarce, unexpected moments where you capture an image far better than you ever could have hoped for that really make wildlife photography special. It's at those moments we remember why we do what we do. During experiences like that, it's like time is suspended and you're so engaged that there's nothing else in the world. It's just you and your subject. Moments like that truly deepen our connection to the natural world and by extension, help deepen the connection others have with it when we share the resulting photo with them. 
And finally, we'll wrap this up with the drive to do better. One axiom I live by is that there's always a better photo. No matter how great your image is, the opportunity is always there to create a better, more compelling image the next time. This single thought that there's always a better photo is a constant driver when I'm in the field. I photographed a wide range of wildlife over the decades, but I'm always looking for a better shot. I'm always looking for ways to improve both my field craft and photographic technique. Each year, I strive to create images that are more artistic and engaging than the ones I produced the year before. I'm always looking for more creative ways to photograph my subjects. I'm always studying my camera technology and trying to leverage it in ways that I hadn't thought of before. In fact, every time a new feature is added to the already impressive array of options on our cameras, I'm asking myself, how can I use it to create even more compelling images? In addition, I often look at other genres of photography to see if there's something that they're doing that can be applied to wildlife photography, of course, usually with a little adjustment. The bottom line is that there's always room for improvement and the challenges are never ending. No matter how accomplished you become, there's always a better shot around the corner. In the end, wildlife photography connects me to the natural world in ways nothing else can. It takes me all over the globe and allows me to witness natural moments that often affect me in very profound ways. Wildlife photography is always presenting challenges, obstacles, and rewards while giving me a way to share what I experience with the rest of the world. It's little wonder it's had a hold on me for the last four decades. So that's it for this year. Here's hoping we both have an amazing 2023. And if you ever spot me in the field, be sure to say hello. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.